Hi friends, happy Wednesday. It's about 12.15 and I have about 12, 13 minutes before I have to go into another session. So I thought I would jump on live and spend a little time with you guys. I have one thought that I wanted to share and chat with you guys about and I also wanted to offer the opportunity to pull a couple cards for anybody who wants to jump on. And any of those who still want some, if I have to jump off, I'm happy to do later if you private message me. So for any of you who don't know me, my name is Laura Mazzotta from Emerge Healing and Wellness. I'm a Reiki and Akashic guide. I've also been a therapist for about 15 years in private practice. And I created this site, this business as an opportunity to help others navigate and their own healing process, whether it's from medical illness or mental illness or circumstances that they have experienced in their lives. And I was drawn to this based on my own hi history with health problems that started a few years ago. And I was faced with the need to explore alternatives for healing myself because I really wasn't making the progress that I was hoping to make. And I have grown in leaps and bounds on all different levels by doing this work. So I'm so eager to share it with others and to spread that light. So the topic I wanted to talk about today actually came up in a session with one of my clients. I think it was last week or the week before. So an anonymous shout out to her for assisting me with processing this. Um, you know, we kind of, the and our collective energy kind of pulled together to come up with a different definition of fairness and what it means to be fair to yourself and to others. So, you know, I think that we can all get stuck on this idea that everything has to be 50-50 to be fair, right? That you need to give half, I need to give half. Or if I'm giving you a certain amount, then you need to also give me that amount back, even if it's not at the same time. But that sets up an exchange relationship, an exchange mentality, which we've always known in modern psychology to be unhealthy um, as a relationship style, right? Because it's always you waiting on what the other one's going to give to you. And when we looked up this definition of fairness, the way that it's defined is twofold. One is legitimate to try to find, to try to follow rules and standards. And the other way is through the adverb. That one is, oh, to not cheat or receive unjust advantage, right? So I have a couple thoughts on this. One is, you know, the advantage piece, when you're using the word fair as an adverb, you're really looking at comparison to others, right? And comparison is something that we're trying to teach ourselves, trying to train ourselves out of doing, right? That we really want to be able to stand confidently in ourselves and know, okay, I'm be am I being fair to myself and others just based on my own internal cues or based on what I value and what's important to me? Um, so, so that was one piece that, that bothered me was that it kind of incorporated this idea of comparison, Okay. And the other one is to live by rules and standards, right? To stay within those. So, but by whose rules and standards? Who defines that? Right? Is it defined by society, by the government, by God, by your political party? You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't necessarily have an exact answer for that. But what I think my answer is, is um, that my rules and standards are defined by my higher self. My rules and standards are defined by, I guess, the messages that I receive, both from my body, my energy field, my emotions, etc., to determine how I can be my best self, right? I went live a couple of days ago, right before my Meditation Mondays on Facebook, because I was sharing journal prompts that I discussed on that live, because uh, we were doing a, write, a written mantra meditation. So I was teaching people how to develop their own personal mantra that has a lot of meaning for them that they can use to repeatedly write in a specific fashion as a form of meditation. So I came on there and shared a couple of those. And, and one of those journal prompts was, how do you see your best self? How do you define your best self? What does that look like? Right? What would it look like if your life unfolded with you as your best self? So, um, so when we were talking, when my client and I were talking about this issue of fairness, um, 
I said to her, I said, you know, when I think of fair, I really think of, well, it doesn't matter to me what the other person is getting if my needs are being met. And she said, well, that sounds selfish. I said, yeah, it does. But if you think about it, for me, if I need 2% and somebody else needs 98%, as long as my needs are being met, I don't care. Give them as much as you want to give them, right? Let them take the time, the space, the material items, whatever it is that we're focusing on, right? And that to me is fair because everybody's needs are being met. And maybe that's just my own definition um, because I'm a Libra and I always want everything to be balanced and balanced not in a 50-50 way, but balanced in terms of that you know, everybody's getting their needs met, everybody's getting what they need. So of course you're going to run into some dissonance there when there's you know, people there who are, I need 50%, you need 50%, or they both need 60%, or they both need 70%. And at that point, we really need to tune into ourselves and practice patience, right? And make some changes within to adjust, I guess, that level of need in this situation. What's need and what is want, right? Do I really need this to survive, you know, in psychology, there was um, a theorist named Maslow who created a, a hierarchy of needs, which I'm sure a lot of you grew up learning in school or otherwise. And, um, you know, the most basic needs, he always said that you needed to meet the bottom of the triangle's needs first and then kind of keep going up to be self-actualized. In recent years, other theorists have said that you can kind of mix them up, that they don't necessarily need to go in sequential order Right, but what he was saying was our most basic needs are physiological, so um, food, water, shelter, those kinds of things, um, and it moves up to and obviously safety and security, and it moves up to belonging and love and all of those things. But um, you know, so that's a helpful way if you wanted to look up that chart. You can Google it and and see a visual of it. What do I need to function, right? And what do I want? in my life. And so I think if you can really discern that within yourself, then it helps you to kind of pull back on or determine, you know, is this something that I really need? Um, and it can adjust your definition of fair in whatever relationship or situation you're in, right? It always comes back to us. No matter what topic we're talking about or discussing, it really always comes back to us to assess that if you come out of a situation, well, that's not fair. I don't feel that's fair. She wasn't fair to me. Or she got this and I didn't get that. That's not fair. Okay, well, maybe you need to reassess your definition of fair. What does that mean to you? What would it look like if your whole life felt fair in any area or relationship, right? So I think it's an important question to sit down and maybe journal about or ask about and that you know underneath that if you really feel like you're unjustly treated or you keep running into these situations where you're on that end of you know feeling like things weren't fair to you maybe you need to readjust your definition maybe you need to look at your needs and wants and define those for yourself you know I might need 2% somebody else might need 98% and you know what in other ways like, okay, let's say I need 2% in terms of material needs and somebody else needs 98%. Maybe emotionally, I need 90% and somebody else needs 10, right? So that's why I say different areas of your life because our needs differ based on, you know, the type of situation we're talking about. And to accept yourself for that, you know, that it's okay. There were years with my husband where I felt inadequate because he is like the most efficient human being on the planet. So he is always doing, 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 and he's super emotionally stable and super level-headed all the time. <laughs> so for me, I would feel like, well, I'm not doing enough, right? I'm not living up to my potential or I'm not doing enough. And I had to settle into what is my definition of fair, wh where my needs are met and his needs are met. Because you know what? It meets his needs to be that level of efficient, to be at that level of motion. You know, it meets his needs to do it that way. And that's part of his purpose that he's serving here on this earth. And I needed to be comfortable with what is my purpose here? 
And how do I align with that? And as long as I'm aligned with that, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. It doesn't matter where anybody else is or what they're getting or how much money they have or whether they think they're happier than I am. It doesn't matter because if I'm aligned and living into my true purpose, then I'm good. Everything's fair as far as I'm concerned. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this because as you can tell, this is just kind of like a brainstorming process for me, right? It was just a topic that came up that I thought was interesting um, and we kind of looked at it in a bit of a different way and um, I would love to hear your thoughts. I also would encourage you to check out the Meditation Mondays that are on my Facebook page because, which is Emerge Healing and Wellness and you can find the link in my bio um, because I offer a lot of information about going within, meditating, different tools you can use, and I also host a meditation circle twice a month in the evenings on Sundays. And that goes a step further to kind of implementing these skills that I'm teaching in Meditation Mondays, but also to developing your intuition so that you can be more in tune with these messages of what do I need, what does my higher self want, what is my purpose. Um, so to be able to develop that and share it in a collective way so that we can develop a powerful experience together. So I'm sending so much love and light. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.